Hello. So today we are going to talk about my personal name change as well as my business name change. I have been in the process of rebranding and rebirthing both my business and myself these last several months. My current name that I have adopted for myself is Poppy G. Pendleton. And my business name that I have adopted for my business is Gypsy Sky Synergy. My old name was Letitia Goble, and my old business name was Flow and Glow Reiki. Both names, both older names, uh, don't really hold a lot for me. Uh, Flow and Glow Reiki was thought of just so I could put in a name so I could apply for my sole proprietor here in New Mexico. It was cute. It rhymed. I didn't put much thought into it. However, as my business evolved and as I evolved, um, I realized that it was a very limiting name because I was no longer doing just Reiki. I was doing a variety of modalities and pulling from multiple streams of consciousness and energy to facilitate my energy work sessions. And I felt like Reiki was just not capturing that however the people that were contacting me were interested in reiki which reiki is useful and i definitely utilize it however the kind of work i do now and have evolved into is very deep inner child healing work very deep divine feminine healing work very deep healing for the masculine to soften and surrender and just it's very deep focused concise work which i feel like with reiki you can utilize it to go deeply, but to utilize it to go deeply just under the umbrella of Reiki isn't doing the service to your client and to yourself in the way that you could go if you were to utilize other modalities and work with other energies and just create a beautiful collaborative combination of things coming together to serve a client's highest good. And with the name Litish Gobel, uh, Global is a really heavy last name. It is of my German ancestors, which it's taken me a long time to warm up to them because Germans are very cold. Um, however, I feel like a lot of my family members are very warm to my German ancestry, and so I haven't paid a whole lot of attention to them. No hard feelings towards them, but I just feel like they get enough attention. So I've been focusing more on um, paying attention to the ancestry that is not as much talked about in my family tree on both my father and my mother's side, which um, also goes into my business name change, which is Gypsy Sky Synergy, which I do have Gypsy Heritage, and it does not get talked about. And it's time to hold the gypsies in the light. Even if they weren't my ancestors, um, they still deserve to be held in the light. The gypsies have faced many, many, many difficulties, and to this very day, they are still treated atrociously, and it does not get talked about. And gypsy lives matter. They do. And I look forward to the day where the gypsies don't have it so difficult. But meanwhile, my contribution to um, contributing to the healing of the Gypsy Collective is through my business name change. Every session that I do and everything that I do in my business comes from a place of heart and from love and from wanting to be of from a desire of being of service to humanity from a place of love and wisdom and authenticity and being that all my sessions have that underlying energy behind them I see gypsy sky synergy as a way of holding the gypsies in light in love in healing through each session I do through each video I make through each blog post that I do and then in this way there's some type of positive input of energy being put into the gypsy collective holding them in the love and the light that they deserve and yeah, so that's actually a little bit about um, why the name choice of Gypsy. I guess I'll just go into the business change. I was just going to go into the first name, have little notes in front of me. Uh, so that's why Gypsy and Gypsy Sky Synergy. And then Sky, uh, I am an air sign. I am an Aquarius, in case you can tell. 
Uh, and the Aquarius, a lot of people misunderstand Aquarius and they think that we are a water sign just because we're holding like a jug of water. However, the jug of water is information, it's knowledge, it's wisdom. And the person that we give it to, they can do what they want with it. However, that is just part of the Aquarian like role is to provide information to whoever, either the masses or individuals. So with Sky in the business name, it is me stepping into my identity as an Aquarius and stepping more into my Mercury in Aquarius as well. And into my moon in Libra, which is also an air sign and really being of service from like that bird's eye view where I don't get caught up in the stickies because I am up with the birds and I'm looking at the bigger view so I can like unravel and reweave where my soul sees as aligned with my client's highest good as I do the work that I do. And also where I can bring information to my clients that help them in their healing journey or bring information on YouTube to those in their healing journey. And then that way it's highlighting my air qualities through the word sky. And also like with gypsies, it's like there's never been a sky that really is a stranger to them because I feel like they're so nomadic, not necessarily by choice, but they're constantly traveling and uprooting themselves, or at least in the past they were. Now it seems like we have like the boxcar gypsies, I think, in Bulgaria where they stay in the same cars, but for a long time they were always traveling. So it's like the sky and the earth were constant in all the like inconsistency in their life. Like they could have a home one night and then it'd be gone the next night, but sky and earth were still there to support them and hold them. And I feel like that's been very much my journey as well is sky and earth have been there very much so to hold me. And so there's that reminder of sky and then the gypsies who make me think of earth because they are of the lands, they travel the lands, right? And then synergy, which synergy I went into a little bit earlier, how Reiki just doesn't capture everything I do anymore. Um, I do utilize Reiki for sure, but I also do tuning forks. I do sound bowls. I sing from soul and let that activate the cells of clients and myself as well. I do somatic releases. I channel an energy from earth, air, fire, water. I channel in certain streams of consciousness, especially plant streams of consciousness. Plants and I are like this, like we're homies um so I work a lot with plant streams of consciousness and I work a lot with dragon streams of consciousness and I also know that in my um let's say like mythological DNA my past life DNA um what scientists probably call junk DNA or what some of you all call woo DNA um I know that I have mermaid at my core and so I work a lot with mermaid energy as well. And so with the name Gypsy Sky Synergy, I feel like it more perfectly captures everything that is going on. And it's just much more in alignment with me, where I'm at now, where my business is at now, where my studies have gone with my business. Um, and I'm sure as I continue to study, like my business will evolve. However, I just feel like this name just really creates a safe container for my business to evolve without having to go through another reband and rebirth. And I leave behind my old business with gratitude. Flow and Glow was a great learning experience for me. I loved going to craft fairs as Flow and Glow Reiki. I love learning about Etsy with Flow and Glow Reiki. I loved learning about how to make flyers and stuff like that. However, now it's time to turn that knowledge into something a little more sustainable through rebranding into something that is more authentic to me. Uh, and so then going into the name change, uh, my personal name change, uh, like I said, the last name Goebel is like German, it's cold, it's ancestry, I don't care about. Um, it comes from a grandfather that doesn't care about me, doesn't want anything to do with me. Um which he's the grandfather of my biological mom, who also doesn't want anything to do with me and doesn't really care about me. And it's just a heavy name. And I know my grandfather had um, strained relations with his parents. I know my grandma that 
used to be married to him, had strained relations with his parents, and they carry that last name too, I believe. And it's just heavy, and some names do need to be laid to rest, and I don't need to carry it anymore. So I decided that when Chris and I um, legally get married on paper, which by the time this video comes out, we'll actually already be legally married on paper, to go ahead and take Chris's last name. And I had to like struggle with this for a while. I was like, do I want to take his last name? Do I want to keep my last name? Do I want to like hyphenate and do the grandparents that I do like? um do their last name Cochran and then hyphenate Pendleton I couldn't decide and it took me a while to do it and then there for a while I was like oh I could be millennial and I could be poppy GP and then it's just like the abbreviations of Goble and Pendleton <laughs> um so I played with this quite a bit and I went through all kinds of exploration with myself as I did it but I ended up taking the name Pendleton um of my husband after some really deep reflection and I feel good about it. And the G is just a reminder of where I come from. I'm not going to really go into what the G like spells out per se. However, it's just a reminder of my origins with um, the universe. And the poppy part is a name that I put a lot of thought into like a lot and it has so many meanings um for starters like I don't like the name Letitia like it's not suiting to me at all Tisha wasn't suiting to me and then for some odd reason everybody seemed to think like shortening my name was cool I don't know why people did this it was actually kind of annoying they got to a point where like people called me T I was like I don't want to be called T that's like stupid um but that's what people did they were lazy and they shortened my name and maybe that was like reflecting back to me how I thought so little of myself and I only allowed myself to take up so much space because that's like the message I received when I was younger right however like consciously I was not cool with just being called T and so I went from Letitia which I wasn't a fan, fan of I prefer Leticia to Tisha which was cool to Tish to T and so with Poppy I chose it because it's not too long it's not a mouthful and you can't really shorten it if you call me P I'm gonna call you out on that because that's like a weird name P like hey P okay um and so yeah um and then I also partly I chose the name based off of like letter combinations um that I'd been studying in this book called name reality and and in name reality there's like several factors that go into a name and your name can make or break you and I realized like at my excuse me at my old name that um my name was not like the greatest name like my old name had a lot of room for like sadness and tragedy and just like not expanding and enjoying life and so I was like screw that let's just ditch all that so then I was like trying to think of like a flower because I originally wanted to be a flower because I love flowers like love 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 them I mean like look at my little crown it has little flowers and I don't even know if you could tell it's a crown but now you can it's so cute um but yeah so I wanted a flower but I couldn't decide and then I didn't want like the scientific name of a flower because they're so long and then eventually a friend was like, well, what about Poppy? And I was like, oh, that's a great suggestion. And then it was like, I just got like confirmation after confirmation after that because um, she gave me that. Then I was watching this really awesome TV show on Netflix called Another Self. It's a Turkish show. Um, if you have not seen, seen it, I highly recommend watching it. It is a fiction show all about um, epigenetics and this thing in psychology called psychodramatics and it's just it's so so good but anyways one of the ways of healing for one of the girls in the show was uh to color a poppy for her ancestors oh I just got that connection too um and I was like huh like so and so mentioned the name poppy now I see poppies in the show and then um there was another way that poppy came to me don't remember it now and then also um like I had been taking California poppy essence for a while to help me heal um, my mother wound, which I had to take a break from it for a little bit because um, those of you who regularly, regularly take flower essences know that like 
sometimes you got like depending on the flower you got to be in the space to go through the emotional releases that you'll go through because you have to feel to heal right and the essences help you bubble it out but then you got to feel it um and so I had taken California poppy I think maybe a bottle and a half which equates to like a year and a half's worth worth of emotional work and it was really helpful I find that in interacting with my biological mother like I don't take things nearly as personal as I used to and I do contribute that to the California poppy essence along with some other essences and along with my awesome therapist and along with my own like diligence to do the self-work and heal myself and give back to my inner child that diligence that she didn't get from her biological mother you know um and so I was like oh yeah California poppy was really helpful and then I was like oh it helped me with the mother wound and then I refer to mother earth as the divine mother or my mother quite a bit like when I go to the river or I go to the mountains it's to go spend time with my mother it's to go spend time with my parent it's to go have conversations with the trees and the bushes and the sky and to tell them everything going on in my life because I can't really do that in my day to day because my biological mother she will do anything she can to deflate me uh she likes to triangulate and have the whole family against me she makes everything about her she calls me like crazy she shames me she guilts me like she does so much horrible things to a child and then tries to tell me she loves me and I'm like okay strange love you got there um So when I go to Mother Earth, it's nice because like I don't get shamed. I don't get guilted. Mother Earth doesn't have like a bear, a tree and a wolf triangulated against me where like I feel like I'm constantly in fight or flight. Like is the tree going to follow me? Is the bear going to chomp my face? Is the wolf going to chase me? Like that doesn't happen to me. Like when I go, I always get beautiful signs of confirmation and I have a very deep love and respect for Mother Earth, just as you should for a parent anyways. Um, and so I feel like whenever I go out there, it's always very safe and I'm always very protected when I go into nature. And so then I was like, oh, like poppies come from the divine mother. Like what a beautiful name for my divine mother, for me, her child. And so then I was like, okay, I could adopt that. And then I was like, oh, Poppy Pendleton, how cute. Like, it'll be a great author name. Um, and then the beautiful thing is about changing my name is like, my old name, Letitia, had no meaning to me. Like, it was a name chosen by a young teenager that was pregnant in high school. And it was the name of a girl that used to beat up all the boys in the school. And so to me, that translates as like, oh, this young teenage girl wished she could beat up the boys. She wished she had someone to protect her from like the aches and pains and trials of high school. So she projected that onto me, her child. And I'm those who know me know I'm not like a fist fighter type person. I'm more of like a fighter for love, which is a much more um, soft and subtle and fierce and resilient kind of fight. Um, It's more long term. So the name just didn't resonate. It never did. And um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. And so anyways like choosing the name it was so cool too because I'm like oh I have this story with the California poppy right now in the mail I have um I think it's called white prickly poppy that is in the mail I'm excited I think I'm actually going to try like a variety of poppy essences just to really help anchor in and integrate poppy and then I have um this beautiful fond memory of my childhood so it connects me to my inner child still and it's still connected to my root I'm not trying to run away from my problems in my past like I'm integrating them but I'm transcending them as well which goes with Chiron retrograde right now Chiron is in retrograde for those of you um, that are familiar with astrology and Chiron is the planet of life wounds and my Chiron is in cancer which is the wound of abandonment so I mean the way my bio mama is it's totally soul contracted it's part of my Chiron my dad he's like not in the picture at all um and my brothers they just recently like blocked me on social media because we got into it about um my YouTube actually and so anyways like picking this name is me choosing to transcend my Chiron and to heal my Chiron and to not self-abandon like why am I going to abandon myself again for people in my life that constantly love to kick me when I'm down and stuff like that you know 
And so, um, which even that's interesting, like the choosing of Poppy, because like I got this tattoo with my cousin and this is a cornflower and the cornflower is the ALS flower, but it's also the flower of Chiron, which I was like, oh, that's interesting that the name came to me um, kind of after that tattoo. So anyways, um, yeah, like this, like I lost my train of thought. Ah. So um, anyways, I'll go back to like the reasons behind Poppy and oh, and the coolness of like choosing it. So like Poppy goes with my inner child. That's right. Chiron inner child. And um, back home in El Paso on the northeast side of town, we have this beautiful field of yellow poppies that bloom every spring. And I used to drive by them all the time as a kid and I loved them and I thought they were so beautiful. And in some ways, I think I kind of took them for granted because like now I never see them and it's a vague memory, but it's a positive memory and it's a memory of Mother Earth, right? So anyways, the poppy connects to that. And then my friend uh, Emily the other day pointed out um, how poppies are connected to World War II, which I'm not a big with like history buff which she is, but I was like, you know, I feel a nudge. Let me read this article she sent me. And it was so cool because this was about the red poppies and how like after all this carnage and war and like burial of bodies and stuff, like in these lands that had been demolished, like after all that happened on them related to World War II, all these beautiful red poppies bloomed and it just like spoke to me of like my journey in this life. Like I have gone through so much tribulation and trial and struggle. And I've gone to some really deeply painful places in my soul that I hope others do not have to go through because it's hard to come back and not everybody can come back from some of the stuff that I was invited to go into in this life. And, um, through it I blossomed and even as I say that I see my little sign I bought during those times that says bloom where you are planted and I did blossom much like a poppy like through all that internal warfare with myself I blossomed and I got through it and through all the strife that happened in my life I blossomed and I got through it and I was resilient and some really beautiful things have come out of me and come through me and been brought to me um which just makes me think of poppies and then it also makes me like of the poppies of world war ii and then it also makes me think of um my ancestors like it's a name that honors them and i feel like it's a name that helps them come through to me and support me in my name change which is really cool because like coming from a family where like my biological mom triangulates everything and like other family members are kept out of my reach it's so cool to have like a name that I know the ancestors approve of and like my biological mother can't um invalidate that for me I mean she might watch this video and invalidate it as she's at home or she might text me and say I'm crazy after watching this video but the thing is like she can't take it from me because she doesn't have that deep nurturing relationship that I have with myself and with my ancestors and with mother earth and um her projections won't even like scratch that shield of self-love that I put into myself or and that shield of self-love that the ancestors have erected around me as I've done my ancestral healing um, journey these last several years and so it's just cool because the ancestors that I'm speaking of they did fight in World War II and I believe we had some in World War I and we had a lot of men come back shell-shocked and war definitely runs down my mother's side of the lineage and so I also see this as like the healing of all that I've done with my ancestral lineage blooming as I'm born again as Poppy and so yeah it's um pretty cool to be able to like choose my name and have all this beautiful story to it and then I even have like a kid's book that I'm looking forward to writing that is a story for my inner child so I can give Poppy um, some inner parenting through my writing and creative gifts and have a story that she gets to be like, oh, my mom wrote this for, for me and 
yeah, like, I don't know, that's cool. So anywho, this is why I'm doing the name changes and what's behind them. I know some of y'all who have known me for a long time are very curious. And I know others of you who don't know me will probably still find this useful. Perhaps some of you are watching this video because you're thinking of your own name changes. And I highly encourage you to do it, but put that into it. And if you haven't checked out the book Name Reality, maybe check it out and see if it resonates with you. I found that really helpful in picking my name. And make sure you choose a name that's true to your heart and true to you and pick a name that it doesn't matter what those outside of you think. As long as it's true to your heart and it honors your soul, that's really what matters. It's, it's your name. You know, you don't need permission from another person to change your name. And that's like another thing too. If you have like a partner and they're like freaking out about a name change, like the last name is just a last name. Like I chose my last name to honor my husband and show him that I am committed to the legacy that we're leaving behind. And I also chose that last name because then that contributes to his ancestral healing, which we will have a child and then they'll have his last name. And then I can't, like, it's hard to explain it in words, but I can see it. But anyways, by agreeing to choose that name, it's like, two for one like there's healing going on in my family tree and then there's healing going on in his family tree because of the work that I do then there's his own healing that's going on because of the work that he does and then that sets our future child up for a little less hardship or maybe a lot less hardship than what um we've had to uh unlearn and heal from in our lives and so yeah like I don't know like the last name, I know some men get really upset when a woman doesn't take their last name, but hyphenating is getting common too. And it doesn't mean like the woman loves the man less. It just means she is doing things different in this new incarnation that she's in and this new era that humanity is in, which is starting to have more and more divine feminine energy rooted in it and it's starting to get, deconstruct a lot of patriarchal energy which taking your husband's last name is patriarchal it is part of the system and I mean it's up to you if you want to do it or not but if your husband shames you for it and stuff like that that's kind of a red flag in my opinion and I would kind of think about that um I'm all for people being able to be true to themselves and be loved in the process as they are. Had I not taken the last name Pendleton, my husband still would have loved me, still would have been with me, still would have supported me because he's a freaking awesome man. And I'm so grateful to have met him. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. I feel like that was meant for someone watching this at a later point in time. Anywho, thank you so much for listening and I will see you in the next video, which I will talk about in that video, uh, my rebirthing process that I went through uh, recently. Thanks. Take care. Aho and be well.